What's up guys, Justin here with TheFusionEssentials.com back with another Fusion 360 tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're going to talk about how to add and adjust materials inside of your models in Fusion 360. So we're going to start with a video talking a little bit about materials and then we'll follow up by talking a little bit more about rendering materials and different things that you can change in order to make things look more realistic inside of Fusion 360. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so this is something I haven't really gotten into into on the channel yet. Um, it's something I always kind of add after the fact because I forget to talk about it in the videos. So I wanted to make a specific series talking about how to add materials. So currently, right now, we have an object that we've modeled out. Well, this object um, has kind of this gray material associated with it. So this is a little bit shiny. Everything else is kind of gray. And uh, that's fine unless you're trying to make something that's made of wood or something that needs a different material applied to it. So I want to talk about how to apply materials to these objects. So to start off, the way that we're going to add materials is you can go up to modify and click on physical material. So physical material is going to allow us to apply a material to an object. So there's a couple other options in here we're not going to talk about right now, but like manage materials lets you kind of manage the materials that are contained inside of your library. You can add custom materials, things like that. We will talk about that in a future video. For now though, I want to teach you how to use Fusion 360's built-in material library. So we're going to click on the button for physical material. So we want to open up this window for physical material. And so what that's going to do is that's going to show you what's currently contained inside of your design. So at the moment you can see how everything has a steel material applied to it as well as access to the Fusion 360 material library. There's some other drop downs in here as well but you're going to spend most of your time in the material library for right now. And so if you look at this you can see how there's a list of different kinds of materials contained inside of Fusion 360. So for example let's go ahead and let's apply a wood material to our base plane underneath our example model. So to do that, we're going to click on wood. And so if you scroll through this with the wood option selected, you can see how there's a number of different materials in here that actually have like a wood texture associated with them. And so the texture is an image file that gets placed on your material and it gets repeated. So let's go ahead and take one of these that has the preview. Notice how if you drag one of these, it doesn't have a material preview in here. It's just going to give you kind of a gray color. Those don't actually have an image associated with them. And I'm not really sure why they're in here to be honest with you. Um, but we're going to go ahead and we'll take this back to steel. Let's drag the mahogany material onto our base plane. So when we drag it onto our base plane, what you're going to notice is this applies an image to your plane to make it look like wood. And so it, we need to adjust it a little bit because it's not showing up properly in here. But this is how you apply different materials. So for example, let's say I wanted the base of this example model to be porcelain. I could drag a porcelain in here onto the base right here. And notice what this is doing is this is applying the materials to the bodies that we have inside of Fusion 360. So our base, for example, when we dragged over our wood material, gets the mahogany material applied to it. So the base of our example model is its own body, and so it gets this material applied to it. And then if we were to add another material, so you can see how there's a ton of different aluminums in here, but let's say that we were to drag over a bronze material onto this sphere right here you can see how the bronze material gets applied only to this body. And so you can also select multiple bodies at once and drag a material on here. And when they're both selected, so if I was to do a shift click like this, and we were to drag a different material over here, notice the material gets applied to whatever's selected. So you can use this to apply different materials to different things or to multiple things at once. But in general, it's applying these to the individual bodies. And so what I want to do for right now is notice how the base piece, it doesn't look very good. And so the reason for that is because the material image is set too large. And so when it gets applied to this face, it doesn't look very realistic. And so what we can do is we can go find that mahogany material in, the, in this design section. We can double click on it in order to edit it. And so notice there's information in here about the physical materials of the objects as well. So I haven't done a whole lot with this, but you can use that for different calculations and other things like that. But what we want to do is we want to go into the advanced functions. And so when we look at our advanced functions, what you're going to notice is you're going to notice that this allows us to edit a lot of different things 
having to do with the material. So some of them have to do with the name and description. So you can put information in different fields about these materials. Um, and then other things like the parameters, notice we're in the appearance tab. The parameters are going to set how your material looks. So you can see how, for example, this mahogany material is made up of this image being applied to your faces. And we can use this in the future to add custom materials. So you can use this to upload different images. Um, there's a different place where you're gonna do that, but just notice that these are basically image files that are being applied to your faces. One thing you're gonna notice about that is there's things in here that you can adjust about that. So for example, if I adjust this reflectance value, you can see how this material gets lighter in my view. Well, the reason for that is because when we adjust the reflectance, that tells Fusion 360 that this material is going to have more light bounce off of it, and so it looks a little bit different. And we'll talk a little bit more about things like this and about roughness maps and other things like that in the rendering video that's going to be coming soon. For now, I just want to talk about something simple, which is how do I adjust the size of this image that's being applied so it looks better? So the way that you're going to do that is you're going to click on your image, well, notice when you click on your image, there's a whole bunch of different things you can adjust. And don't get overwhelmed by all of the different options in here. We specifically want to go down and we want to adjust the scale. So right now, this image is being tiled every 18 inches by 36 inches. So basically it means that the image that's being applied in here is 18 inches wide by 36 inches high. Well, that's too big and I can't see the individual grains on this face. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on one of these and I'm gonna adjust it down. And then watch what happens to my material over here when I do this. So I'm gonna adjust my sample size to something half of the size that was in here before. So I'm just gonna type in a value of nine. Then I'm going to hit the tab key. And so notice what happened when I hit the tab key is this material resized inside of your um, inside of your workspace. So you can see how now this looks a little bit more realistic. I think we need to make it smaller still, but you can see how this is changing in real time as we make these changes. So let's go ahead and bring this down to something like four inches and hit the tab key. And so notice how when I take this to four inches, and look at it straight up and down, this looks a lot more like a wood material inside of my model. And even this is probably a little bit too big. We may take this down to something like two inches. And so now you can see how that image is being tiled really nicely along your base piece right here. And another thing I wanna point out is there's a little chain right here that's checked. And so the reason the chain is checked is because this is going to lock the aspect ratio of our width and our height. So notice how when I adjusted this top box, the bottom box adjusted with it. So what that's trying to do is that's trying to avoid any kind of image um, distortion that happens. So if you take something and stretch it out one way but not the other way, your image doesn't look as good. So for example, if I was to uncheck this, and then take this back to what it was before, which I think was 36 inches, and then hit the tab key, you're gonna notice that this gets really stretched out, and so does this image. So this gets really stretched out and it doesn't look very realistic anymore. And while this might look okay from a zoomed out standpoint, if you zoom in at all, or if you render this, it's not going to look very good. So what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that when you're working with materials like these, you keep this box checked or this little chain checked because what the chain is going to do is it's going to lock your aspect ratio in place. And so notice that this image is tiling. And so what that means is it's repeating across faces inside of your model. So let's say, for example, that we had a much larger face. So I'm just going to draw a fairly large box in here. So 47 by 80 should be fine. And then let's go ahead and rotate down, extrude it up so that we have a face and click on OK. Then we'll go back to our materials and we'll go ahead and we'll apply this mahogany material to our object. And so if you look at this, you can tell by looking at this that what's happening is this same image is being repeated over and over across this face. So that's how materials are, that's how materials cover faces inside of 3D modeling programs is they take this singular image, this one right here, and they tile it. So for example, if you look at this, you can see how you have repetition of the same thing here, 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 
and here. And so it's fairly seamless, especially with this material, meaning you don't have big nasty seams, but you can tell that the same material is being repeated over and over again. And so that's something that you can adjust if you want. So you can set it so that it doesn't tile like this. But the problem is if you set it where it doesn't tile, then you can see how you get this one individual image on this face that isn't covering the rest of the face. So as a general rule, you're just gonna leave this set on tile but you can see how you can adjust the way the tiling works with these options right here. You can also rotate this. So if I wanted this wood grain to face a different direction, let's go back down here to this one. So this is the one we're working with on a smaller scale, but notice how you could come in here and you could type a value of 90 degrees to rotate this image. Well, when you rotate this image, this means your wood grain is gonna be fo facing the other direction. So um, when you, so you can use this in order to make your wood grains, if you're doing woodworking or something like that, follow a direction that you want in here. So you can adjust both your offset, so where that sits on your face. You can see how I can click and move this in order to move the way this sits on this surface, and I can also adjust the rotation. So these are all things that you can adjust inside of your model. And one thing to note about this is if we click on done, and we're not gonna worry too much about these other options for right now, we're gonna kinda leave those alone. Um, just focus on your image settings. And so once you're done with the changes to this material, you can go ahead and you can click on apply in order to apply those changes. And that means that those, mater those changes have been made inside of your model. And then once you're done, once everything's been applied, you can close this window. And so this should give you a good idea of how you can start applying materials to your models. And so that's what I've done like in this wood box model, for example, is I've come in here and I've applied a material to my different objects to make it look like wood. So each one of my bodies or my components has this wood material applied to it. And so we'll talk in a future video about going into the render section and actually creating a more realistic rendering of our object. This should give you a pretty good idea of how to apply materials to your objects to get started inside of Fusion 360. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought was this helpful to you. I just love having that conversation with you guys. Uh, if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Fusion 360 content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.